the Double A Nutrition Coach Podcast. What's up guys, thank you for checking in. This is Albert Aldridge, the Nutrition Coach of the Double A Nutrition Coach Podcast. This is episode three. Today, we're talking about building mental strength. Here we go. Before we dive into this episode, I'd just like to say thank you very much for all of you who've been listening to the podcast so far and for the support you've been showing me on social media through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, as well as commenting in the comment section to this podcast. And it's really exciting, actually, because I've got quite a few guests lined up for future episodes. And if you're actually new to the AA Nutrition um, Coach podcast, then what it is, is I try and keep it between 10 to 15 minutes long. But sometimes when I have a guest on, that becomes a lot longer. So the other week, I had a legend called Alex Mershon on of We Are PR Clothing. And that episode was roughly 30 to 45 minutes long, I think. So sometimes I'll do shorter ones. Sometimes I'll do longer ones. And just let me know what you guys prefer lengthwise of an episode. But I can't guarantee um, to keep them short when I have a guest on. So in the future, I've got a woman who might be talking about her weight loss journey so far as well as I've got a few sports athletes lined up that I'd like to get onto the podcast. But anyway, for a couple of things I need to cover just before we start the actual episode, if you'd like to download my fat loss program, which is for free, then I'll leave a link into the show notes if you're listening um, to the podcast from Podbean. I'm going to be uploading this on an iTunes. Or if you're listening on YouTube, then just go ahead into the comment section below and the sorry, YouTube description and you'll click the first link. Um, which is just in there and you'll be able to download the fat loss podcast, the fat loss program, sorry, which is a free PDF document, which is a series of blog posts I've done throughout the couple of years I've been posting on Facebook, the useful content you guys can use to optimize fat loss and apply to your own nutrition coach program. I do apologize if I swallow a lot in this episode because I had chocolate around an hour ago. I thought would have gone out my system by now, but I just keep having to swallow for some silly reason. Also, another thing that's being lined up after my university dissertation, when that's finished in the summer, is I'm going to be doing a membership site that people will have to pay for. But I work with clients at the moment on a one to one basis and see quite a few clients on Skype and help them with their um, nutrition program to optimize fat loss and tone up. But I'm thinking of taking on more people and putting them into a membership site where I'll be doing exclusive content, exclusive workouts, doing live one-to-one sessions just with the people as part of the membership site where you'll pay a monthly subscription, but also be helping people by messaging them individually on Facebook and through email in helping them to lose fat as well. If you're interested in that kind of thing, do let me know because this is some an, an idea I've had in my mind for a long period of time and I really would like to use this Um, and have it alongside my website which I'm currently building it's all going to be done by the time I finish my dissertation but the dissertation has got to come first because I eventually would like to become an Olympic nutritionist in case you didn't know and finishing this dissertation and finishing my uni degree well is a part of becoming an Olympic nutritionist so I've got to put a bit more focus on that but finally before we start the episode a joke I read this um, just now and actually it's brilliant it's short sweet but absolute comedy gold the joke is when is the best time to use a trampoline in the springtime all right sorry that's awful it's small and if you have any joke that you'd like me to include on the podcast or any youtube videos then do let me know via email afitness01 at gmail.com or you could just let me know in the comments section or just contact me on social media but today we're going to be talking about building mental strength and how I utilise my Christian faith and weight training in order to build a really good, healthy mentality, just a life um, outlook on um, life in general and building up mental health strength. I'll be covering four main points. And if you'd like to interact with me about this topic, because mental health is so broad, then do let me know what you think about how you personally build up your mental strength in the comments section if you're on YouTube or if you utilise any techniques or if you've had experience with cognitive behavioural therapy and perhaps you can let other people know who listen to the podcast um, by um, writing in the comments section about your experience with that. 
But the first main point is I found utilising weight training, especially I'm focusing on with this first point, is that it really helps you to push past limits that you haven't been able to push past before. So an example for me, I think a great one with this are uh, is two exercises in particular, two compound movements, which is the back squat, um, front, yeah, more back squat rather than front squat, and the deadlift. Just because you're having to utilise so much weight and shift a really heavy weight and trust your own ability in order to shift that weight. So for example, with a squat, I've had this before where I've had to where I've programmed myself to hit a PR. So I can especially remember one session of doing six reps, um, six sets by six reps, sorry, using 120 kilos. And 120 kilos on my back felt very, very heavy and really digs into the upper back. But I knew my legs were strong, so I told myself at the start of every single set, this was in the summer, by the way, um, when I was doing this uh, session and I've had to utilize this mindset with other squat sessions after that but I always tell myself that my legs are stronger I've got a strong core I've trained myself before this session in order to be able to shift this kind of weight load and I keep using positive self-talk in order to psych myself up for the set and perform at my best but I do find that as the sets go on sets one to three aren't too bad they are still definitely challenging but four and five is a really big test of mental strength. And usually your body can actually do more than you realise and your mind is going to be telling you that you can't do something. So especially with the last few reps of the last set, say if you're doing the six by six, reps four, five and six, you will have finished three um, reps of set number six. And what I found personally is that my body just wants to put the weight back and is telling me, you can't do it. You're not going to get up if you squat down one more time. But then what I do is I utilize self-talk, positive thinking, visualize myself actually doing reps four, five and six and really suck myself and self up and say that I can do it. And I've often um, pretty much 80, 90 percent of the time I've been able to push past that mindset limit. And this really can tie over into other aspects of life. So, for example, I usually use this analogy of a job interview. You perhaps are in the position where you're about to walk into an interview of a job. You think you it's quite a little bit out of reach, but you still want to try going for any um, for the job anyway. So before you go into this interview, you say to yourself, I feel a little bit out of my depth, but I have the ability. I've worked up to this interview. I've got the skill set I need to be able to perform this job well. I can do this. And as soon as you use that positive self-talk, in my case, I also say a little prayer as well sometimes, you can walk into that situation which seems overwhelming and perform well under pressure. So usually it's people's mindset that is holding them back from achieving things they think they can't achieve. As soon as you tell yourself that you can achieve something, it is achievable. You might It might take slightly longer than you want it to, but I personally think that if you train your mindset properly, you can achieve anything as long as you set your mind to it and utilise positive self-talk and just have more self-belief and self-efficacy in many situations in life. But second point, I'm going to utilise, I'm going to use the example of running with this one, but it's making sure you don't panic in situations that seem a little bit overwhelming. So what I mean is with running, for example, initially when you start running, you increase your speed from being sedentary to running quite fast to start with, obviously, and your heart rate will increase very quickly and you'll find that you become quite breathless until you reach that point if you're going on a steady run where you reach the point where your breathing becomes regular and it starts to feel more comfortable. But initially, having to increase that speed um, for jogging and running, you might panic a little bit because you're having to breathe more quickly and utilise more oxygen in order to create energy. And that can be quite a panicking experience. And I definitely found to start with with running that that was something I had to get past about trusting my breathing technique and my breathing patterns that I will be able to inhale enough oxygen and exhale enough carbon dioxide in order to, to perform running effectively and run for long periods of time. But what so what my point is here is that once you get over the panicking stage initially and you tell yourself 
I can breathe properly. I know that I need to breathe in deeply, breathe out nice and steadily in order to keep up this um, sustained performance throughout the run. Then you'll find that a situation that seemed very overwhelming and something you might not be able to cope with to start with, it actually feels a lot easier when you go through the what you need to um, do in your mind. So with running, about how you need to regulate your breathing in order to manage the situation. So again, with an interview example, you just think, right, rather than the interview seeing too overwhelming and then you trying to get out of the situation, think, right, I'm going to go in, I'm going to shake the um, people's hands who are interviewing me, then I'm going to sit down, then they're going to ask me the first question, they're most likely to ask me this question, this is how I'm going to answer this question. And when you go through that process of going through the situation in your mind, it will actually seem a lot less overwhelming and you'll find that you'll be able to cope with it a lot more easily compared to if you don't go through the situation mentally in your head before you actually go and into that situation in reality, if that makes sense. My third point is that everybody is on their own journey. So you don't need to um, be influenced by social media. My point is here, I've been very guilty of this in the past. We, A lot of us um, are fortunate enough to have phones and we can use Instagram, Facebook to post things up and we can read content online. But With that, sometimes it's very easy to fall into a mindset of thinking I've not progressed far enough yet and I'm already this age. So, for example, um, I had a period where I really wanted to become like the next Mo Farah, which is the um, which is a great British runner. If you're not from the UK, who performed, um, I I think he's done world records or um, Olympic records in the 10K, the 5K and other um, long runs, and I thought I was going to be able to get to Olympic standard. Um, But then I was reading on social media a lot about how a certain athlete in a different sporting discipline in the Olympics, like I think it was weightlifting or something, started training at the age of, it was something like five or seven. Um, Obviously don't do weight training, I wouldn't recommend it at that age, but some sporting athletes start really, really young, and I didn't start taking sport that seriously until I was probably in my teenage years. I did do football before that um, to a relatively high level, about county level, but really taking sport seriously as an individual sport for myself, like running or um, CrossFit like I'm doing now. I didn't take it seriously till a little bit later on um, compared to some of these athletes who are achieving world records now who start like when they're a single digit age. But don't be influenced by social media saying um, that you that you need to be further on with your sporting journey than you actually are. So I started to get a little bit down about this. But then that's why CrossFit is so good, I find, because it's utilizing lots of different sporting disciplines. You need to be good at lots of different things and you can still build up to a really high level. So um, if you don't know, I'd like to be able Um, If you haven't been following me on social media, I'd eventually in about eight years time be I'd like to be in a position where I'm competing at the top, top level in CrossFit at the CrossFit Games, which is taking place and which takes place, sorry, in California. I'm aiming to get to there, but don't be somebody who is passionate about a sport, but then you think, oh, I'm too old to start it now or it's too late for me to start because I'm not going to get anywhere or progress anywhere with it. Just start it and you'll be surprised. The more you commit to being consistent with your training of of, um, of that sport, the opportunities that will arise for you. So there are a lot of people I know that have started running relatively, I say late on, because society thinks that as you get older that's starting too late it's not starting too late at all I really do think people use age too much um, as a limiting factor and it's only you telling yourself that's a limiting factor but honestly change that mindset and use everything as an opportunity and you'll be amazed about how far you can progress with something so I know a lot of runners that have started as society thinks relatively late on I don't think it's late on but they've taken up running, say, in their 20s, 30s, and some of them are competing at a British level who are from the UK. 
um, in competitions that take place in London. There are lots of people I know who have gone on to do the London Marathon. And there are other sporting disciplines where if you really want to compete at a high level, there it's like with CrossFit. I'm going to use I'm sorry I use CrossFit so much as an example, but I've heard people can compete in CrossFit as well at an age. I don't want to say as old as because that is not how I view it. At an age of, say, 50, 60, 70, they're still competing across it because you have different age groups and age categories. That's the same with running as well, which is brilliant. And to be honest, if your sport is something like gymnastics and you unfortunately um, find that you're not able to compete in the Olympics because you've taken up gymnastics at, say, 40 or 50, you can still get involved and compete in different ways. If So if you want to perhaps go to the Olympics with gymnastics, you could be you could go into a role of perhaps being somebody who helps. Um, it's like with the 2012 London Olympic Games, you could be a games maker, but you could probably be involved with gymnastics that way instead rather than competing. Or you could become a coach and help others to get to a top, top high level. And then maybe um, there are still competitions that you can do as a gymnast when you're slightly older that you can still compete in and get a really big buzz from. So that is the main thing. And just tell people about your journey as well, because I find it too much these days that there is there are too many people who are limiting um, themselves to doing only a certain amount of things because they're finding um, on social media. It says you need to be this age to do this sport or this skill or this exercise. And that needs to go. Finally, you'll find with social media that everything has to be done fast. I've no idea why. But it seems like people, well, this is in my opinion, so feel free to disagree with me. But I find on social media, especially actually with making money online, that the people who are making money online and are 10 years old, that's amazing compared to somebody who's um, making money online and they're 20 years old. Or somebody who's competing in a sport at a world level at, say, 15 years old is so much cooler than somebody who's doing it at 25. But... Our lifetime, I view it um, and I've developed this mindset through learning more about the Christian faith. It's an opportunity. It's not something life isn't something to be endured. It's something to be enjoyed. Use every opportunity like I'm going to be doing a mental health book and probably asking um, for help from other people I know on social media and online. Um, I've got a few names that come to mind, actually. Um, about mental health who are really good Pete Bourne especially of the Bourne community if you're looking into life coaching he's a brilliant guy to go to not that, not that I've used him personally but um, he does have a life coaching um, business that he set up and he's impacting so many lives positively through it but um, I went off on a bit of a tangent there but I'm oh yeah that's it I'm thinking of making a mental health book um, relating it to my Christian faith but also relating Um, And also just talking about mental health in a general sense. So I'm going to use both sides of the spectrum, um, relating it to my faith and not relating it to my faith. But how life is to be enjoyed. It's an opportunity. And every year that you're alive is a different is a chance for you to try out different things, um, achieve different goals. And as well, if you'd like to go to my first episode of goal setting um, of the podcast where I talk about goal setting, I talk about setting life goals, yearly goals, decade goals. Don't worry if they're not clear at the moment. You just might need to think about it first. But that can also really help with viewing life as an opportunity. I often find with a topic I'm passionate about, guys, that I do go off on a bit of a tangent. But I really hope you can relate to this and that you can take value from this podcast episode. Because I want to help as many people as possible, especially in regards to mental health, because I see it come up too often and I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all and I do believe that we all go through harder times of life and um, periods of life that's a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable but I see mental health and people suffering from it unfortunately too often and I really want to try and battle this and combat mental health with the help of you guys through this podcast through making videos and also telling people about my Christian faith. But thank you again, guys, so much for listening to the third episode of the AA Nutrition Coach podcast. As I said, I will be having people on in the future um, as guests talking about weight loss, also talking about mental health, talking about the Christian faith. And if you'd like to download my free fat loss program in order to help 
um, yourself set up your own nutrition plan to optimize fat loss and tone up build muscle then click the first link in the youtube description or click the first link in the show notes if you're listening to the podcast and do let me know if you're perhaps interested in me creating this membership site to help lots of people um, with fat loss and setting up their own nutrition plans so basically more people can get in shape and feel good about themselves um Thank you again, guys. Really appreciate you checking in. And I'll see you guys in my next YouTube video or the next episode of the podcast, depending on where you're listening from. See you later. The Double A Nutrition Coach Podcast.